So whenever we're specifying any type of measurement, we need to use a reference frame. We need to specify a certain reference frame. So let's look at the following example. Let's suppose we have a moving train and inside this train we have two people who are stationary. Let's suppose this is you and your friend. Now the train is moving at 60 kilometers an hour and let's suppose there's a third person standing outside the train watching the train pass by. Now to the person outside the train, the train is moving at 60 kilometers an hour and so are you and this other person. So even though to you it might seem as if you're not moving and neither is this person, to this person you're actually moving at 60 kilometers an hour. So there's a conflict in information. And it's very important to always specify what reference frame we're using whenever we're specifying some type of information such as speed. So for example, I can say that my reference frame is of this person. My point of view is of this person. And so now I can say the train is moving at 60 kilometers an hour going this way. I know exactly what that means. So once again, frame of reference must be specified and is used to represent different types of measurements. Now in physics we usually use the coordinate plane to specify our uh, reference frame. So our reference frame is our coordinate plane. So let's suppose we want to specify uh, the location or position of our object on the two-dimensional plane. So here we have the xy plane. So Anything going this way, so this is our point of origin, anything going this way along the x-axis is positive, anything going this way is negative, anything going up on the y-axis is positive, anything going below the point of origin along the y-axis is negative. So let's suppose you're at the point zero, 0, the origin, and let's say that your friend is at this point here. How do we specify where that person is, well, we use the xy coordinate. In other words, we count how many uh, units over is our person on the, along the x-axis and then along the y-axis. And we specify x comma y. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 units over along the x-axis, so positive 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 5 going up. So 4 comma 5, that's our location of our object. So once again, one way to describe motion is to talk about the speed as well as our direction. And the xy plane allows us to describe our direction uh, of our object. So we can say that if our object is moving in the one-dimensional plane, that we can say it, it's going along the x-axis in the positive direction. Or if it's moving upward, we can say it's moving along the y-axis uh, going upward. So, in the positive direction. So, what exactly is distance and what is displacement? Well, distance is defined as the total length an object travels. And displacement is the distance it has traveled from its initial starting point. So, displacement is simply the change in our distance, the change in our position. Now, distance only has magnitude, while displacement both has a numerical value, the magnitude as well as our direction. So, we have to specify in which direction our object displaced. So let's look at two example, examples. Let's suppose we have the x-plane here, so our object is moving along uh, one dimension along the x-axis. So let's suppose our object starts at the point zero, and so that's our initial point, and it moves to our final point, which is 10 units over. Let's say it's 10 kilometers over. Let's say each one of these units is a kilometer. So what is our displacement and what is our distance? Well, distance is the total amount it has traveled. So it traveled 10 kilometers, so our distance is 10 kilometers. What about displacement? Well, our initial position is here and final position here. So the way we find the change in our distance travel, the change in our position is simply the final minus the initial. So 10 minus 0 is 10 kilometers. So for this case, we have the same exact values. 
But let's look at the second example. Let's suppose our person starts at the origin, so starts at 0, moves to 10, and then moves back to 5. So the total distance traveled is, well, it goes from 0 to 10, that's 10 kilometers, and then 5 more, that's 15 kilometers. So distance is 15 kilometers. What about our displacement? Well, displacement, remember, is the distance it traveled from our initial position. So initial position is at 0, and the final position is at 5. So 5 minus 0, or final minus initial, is 5. So although the distance is 5 kilometers, our displacement is 5, or uh, uh, 15 kilometers, our displacement is 5 kilometers going this way. Remember, we always have to specify our uh, magnitude as well as direction, and our direction going this way is positive. So if we start at 0, we end up at 5, we have positive 5. Once again, displacement has both magnitude as well as direction. So let's look at our final example. Let's suppose that our person starts at this initial point, goes to this point, and goes back to some point uh, in the back of our initial point. So our initial and final position. So let's suppose our initial point is at 0. Uh, he goes all the way to 10 and goes all the way back to negative 5 along our x-axis. So our total distance traveled is simply, well, it's 10 going this way, then 15 going this way, so that's 25 kilometers. What about our displacement? Well, let's find our delta x. Delta simply means change, and whenever we see delta x, it's simply x final minus x initial. In this case, we're using x to represent our change in position. So our final point is negative 5, and our initial point is 0, so negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5 kilometers. So the change in distance or displacement is 5 kilometers in the negative direction going this way. That's what the negative represents.